Russia typhus. Often called jail fever because its spread was heavily associated with overcrowded and unsanitary living conditions in prisons and military camps, which were relatively common after World War II. The symptoms would often start with something similar to a bad flu, but as the disease progressed, relentless chills and sweats followed those symptoms, the pounding headaches that seemed to split your skull in two, and the bone-deep exhaustion that made every movement feel like an uphill battle. With typhus also causing a rash of red spots that spread across the body, adding to the misery and discomfort, and delirium, hallucinations induced by fever often blurred the lines between reality and nightmare, leaving sufferers feeling lost and disoriented. Perhaps the scariest aspect was how typhus could strike anyone, regardless of age, gender, or social status, at a time when the rich did not walk the same streets as the poor. Refugee populations fleeing the conflict in Russia carried the disease with them, leading to outbreaks in refugee camps and communities throughout the region. The Russia typhus epidemic claimed two to three million lives between 1918 and 1922. During this epidemic, it was reported that some sufferers in their fever-induced delirium would strip off their clothes in the cold, mistakenly believing they were burning up. This bizarre behavior often led to hypothermia, complicating their condition further. The Japanese Plague The Japanese Plague was caused by the same bacterium responsible for bubonic plague from 1185 to 1333 in Japan. This pathogen was transmitted by fleas that infested rats, and the crowded and unsanitary conditions of urban life provided the perfect breeding ground for rats and fleas, fueling the spread of the disease. After coming in contact with the pathogen, usually through contaminated food, the victims of the plague would wake up one morning with a fever and swollen lymph nodes, only to find themselves bedridden within hours. The symptoms were gruesome. A searing headache, excruciating pain in the limbs, and the telltale blackening of the skin that gave bubonic plague its ominous nickname, the Black Death. As the plague progressed, victims succumbed to delirium and madness, their bodies eaten by the disease. It claimed an estimated 30 to 40 percent of the population, which totaled 1.8 to 2.4 million people, leaving communities reeling in its aftermath. Smallpox during the colonial era in South America, smallpox epidemics ate through indigenous communities, primarily during the 16th and 17th centuries, the same period as European explorers and colonizers arrived, and within a century, the population of Mexico fell from about 25 million to 1.6 million. Indigenous communities with no prior exposure to the disease went from fighting flu and mild colds that their immune systems had adapted to, to fighting the deadly disease in the world at the time. The odd thing about this disease was its transmission mode, prolonged face-to-face -face contact. For example, if you hugged an infected loved one too long and your face stayed in contact with their face, a distinctive rash would appear within days, starting on your face and spreading to the rest of your body. The rash would progress to fluid-filled blisters, eventually crushing over and forming scabs, leaving permanent scars. The smallpox virus spread rapidly through close contact with infected individuals or contaminated objects, moving like wildfire through highly populated indigenous communities, wiping out entire villages, which led to a catastrophic impact on the indigenous populations. Communities were overwhelmed by illness and death, and mortality rates soared as high as 90% in some areas. The loss of life was staggering, and millions of indigenous people perished as a result of the disease. Efforts to control the spread of smallpox were limited during the colonial period, as understanding infectious diseases and public health measures was rudimentary at best. The smallpox epidemics forever altered the demographic landscape of colonial South America. Kokolitsli Kokolitsli was an epidemic that struck Mesoamerica in the late 16th century. The word Kokolitsli is derived from the Nahuatl language, spoken by the Aztec people of central Mexico, meaning pestilence or plague. The origins of Kokolitsli remain unknown. 
Entire villages fell silent as the disease claimed the lives of men, women, and children alike. It was a nightmare come to life with no apparent rhyme or reason to its merciless rampage. While the symptoms of Kokolitsli included the classic signs of infectious disease like fever, headache, nausea, and vomiting, some victims would even start to bleed from the ears. But unlike most diseases, Kokolitsli went beyond causing just physical harm. It was reported that some afflicted individuals exhibited bizarre symptoms such as uncontrollable laughter or crying fits. Severe neurological symptoms, including hallucinations and delirium, often accompanied these emotional disturbances. The erratic behavior of those affected added to the mystery and fear surrounding the epidemic. Historians estimated that as much as 80% of the indigenous population in some regions perished during the epidemic, leaving behind ghost towns and shattered communities. Communities. Hundreds of years later, despite centuries of research, the true cause of Kokolitsli remains unknown and debated among historians and scientists to date. Some theories point to viral or bacterial infections, while others suggest environmental factors or even deliberate acts of biological warfare. But no one knows for sure. Malaria Malaria, a mosquito-borne disease caused by parasites, has plagued humanity for centuries, with numerous epidemics occurring throughout history. To put this in context, some publications mention that malaria has killed about 50 to 60 billion humans, which is half of all humans ever to exist. Meaning, if you were unfortunate enough to be born in any of the tropical countries before the invention of modern medicine, you'd stand a one in two chance of dying from this. Interestingly, the pathogen that causes malaria is carried by tiny mosquitoes smaller than a grain of rice who hunt for blood based on scent. Studies even show that beer drinkers are likelier to get bitten by a mosquito because they emit an odor the insects find irresistible. The symptoms of malaria can vary depending on the type of parasite would make you feel like you have the flu, but much worse with recurring bouts of fever and intense body aches, along with chills, sweats, headache, and fatigue. One scary fact about malaria is that in some cases, the infection can lead to a condition known as malarial coma. This severe complication of malaria can cause patients to enter a state of profound unconsciousness resembling a coma, often lasting for hours or even days. During this time, individuals may appear unresponsive and unaware of their surroundings. Despite the efforts of modern medicine, malaria remains a significant public health challenge in many parts of the world, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, where millions of people, especially children under five years old, still fall victim to this preventable and treatable disease each year. Polio. During the peak of the epidemic in the 1940s and 1950s, parents were living in constant terror of their children falling ill, knowing that this highly contagious viral infection could lead to paralysis, muscle weakness, and in severe cases, death could strike at any moment. During that period, the disease killed over 500,000 people worldwide each year. The symptoms of polio varied wildly, which meant that you could go from having mild flu-like symptoms to severe paralysis in a few weeks. Many poliovirus victims experienced the former, having only to deal with fever, headache, sore throat, and fatigue, similar to the common cold or flu symptoms. Its most horrific feature was its impact on children. Put yourself in hospitals overflowing, with rows of patients confined to iron lungs, devices used to help individuals with paralyzed respiratory muscles breathe, filling the wards. But while it primarily affects children, in some rare cases, adults who were previously unaffected by polio during childhood could contract the virus later for the first time as adults, or when the virus reactivates after lying dormant in the body for many years, which would leave them paralyzed. The development of the polio vaccine, first introduced by Dr. Jonas Salk in 1955 and later improved upon by Dr. Albert Sabin with the oral vaccine, marked a turning point in the fight against the disease. Thanks to widespread vaccination efforts, the incidence of polio declined rapidly in the years following the vaccine's introduction. By the late 1970s, polio 
polio had been eliminated from the United States, and the epidemic that had once struck fear into the hearts of millions became a distant memory. Paul Alexander, who sadly died a few years ago at 78, was paralyzed with polio at age 6 and relied on the machine to breathe. The Scarlet Fever Scarlet fever, a bacterial infection caused by a Group A streptococcus bacteria, led to a significant epidemic in Australia during the late 19th and early 20th centuries that claimed over 8,000 lives. This epidemic occurred primarily in urban areas, where overcrowding and poor sanitation facilitated the spread of the disease and children were particularly susceptible to the infection. Scarlet fever typically begins with symptoms that make you believe you have strep throat, like a sore throat, fever, and swollen glands. However, if you have scarlet fever, what would set it apart is the distinctive rash that follows, covering the body in red sandpaper-like bumps and strawberry tongue. During the acute phase of the illness, the tiny bumps on the tongue's surface could become swollen, red, and covered in a white coating strikingly resembling a strawberry. The scarlet fever epidemic in Australia peaked around the late 1800s and early 1900s, coinciding with similar outbreaks in other parts of the world. It was, however, particularly concerning due to the potential for serious complications, including rheumatic fever a disease that inflamed the joints. Efforts to control the spread of scarlet fever during the epidemic focused on improving sanitation, promoting hygiene practices, and isolating infected individuals to prevent further transmission. The Naples Plague The origin of the Naples Plague, also known as the Great Plague of Naples, is a devastating epidemic that ravaged the city of Naples, Italy in 1656. The plague was another spring from the bubonic plague, believed to be traced back to ships arriving from Levant, a French island in the Mediterranean off the coast of Riviera. It spread rapidly throughout the city, fueled by the dense urban population and unsanitary living conditions. Just like the bubonic plague, the symptoms of the Naples plague were sudden fever, headache, and weakness, followed by painful swellings in the lymph nodes known as buboes. These buboes often turned black as the disease progressed, which, as mentioned earlier, is the source of the name the Black Death. Victims would also experience severe respiratory symptoms, including coughing, difficulty breathing, and bloody sputum. The impact of the Naples Plague was terrible, both in terms of human lives lost and the social and economic disruptions it caused. Streets were littered with the bodies of the dead, and makeshift hospitals overflowed with the sick and dying. Entire families were wiped out, with communities that were left in a state of shock and mourning from the 150,000 to 200,000 and people who died from the plague. Chikungunya The chikungunya epidemic was a viral disease that spread rapidly through Caribbean communities, causing illness and disruption that affected millions of people across the region between 2013 and 2014 and claimed over 2,000 lives. It was transmitted primarily by mosquitoes, you guessed it, which usually thrive in tropical and subtropical climates. However, while remote island communities faced the threat of this mosquito-borne disease, densely populated urban areas were not spared either. As these vectors multiplied and spread, so did the risk of chikungunya transmission. Within 2 to 12 days of being bitten by a disease-carrying mosquito, a patient would find themselves experiencing debilitating symptoms like severe joint pain, headache, fever, muscle pain, and a rash. Chikungunya translates to that which bends up, referring to the characteristic symptom of severe joint pain that causes patients to adopt a stooped or hunched posture. Families struggled to care for loved ones who were suddenly unable to walk or move without pain, and within months, neighboring islands and countries reported escalating case numbers, medical resources were stretched thin, and hospitals were filled to their limits. The economic impact of the chikungunya epidemic was also terrible because tourist arrivals plummeted as travelers canceled or postponed their trips to affected areas, fearing the risk of infection. Hotels, restaurants, and other businesses reliant on tourism revenue suffered losses, leading to job losses and economic hardship for many in the region. It was a double blow for Caribbean countries already dealing with high levels of poverty and vulnerability. First they had an epidemic, and now they had fewer resources to treat it. 
The epidemic eventually subsided as efforts to control mosquito populations and prevent transmission proved effective. Public health measures such as mosquito control programs, community education campaigns, and surveillance efforts also helped contain the spread of the virus. Additionally, as more people were infected and developed immunity to the virus, the overall prevalence of chikungunya in the population decreased. Thank you.